Hello everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Knowing command line is a skill that can really set you apart from other budding developers, which is why we recently asked our in-house pro developer, Michael, to join our live stream for a CLI Q&A. Now we've condensed that stream down into our top 10 tips so you can get started with CLI right away. Let's get into it. What is command line and why should I care? Command line is pretty much the most computer way to interact with your computer. So if you own Windows, Mac or Linux machine, command line is like the most direct way to interact with it. It's like basically eating in a restaurant kitchen. You know, you don't have a fancy restaurant table or anything, and you don't have any middle people like waiters and all the servant stuff. You just go straight to the chef and talk to the chef as, as is. It's all much more direct than what you have with GUI. It's uh, a bit sorry, like... GUI is graphical user interface. Sounds like it's more like having a private chef. Yeah, I mean, it's not a perfect analogy, right? It breaks down very quickly. Like for a start, it actually doesn't give you any food. Your computer becomes a little bit more close and you can exercise its abilities a little bit better. When's the right time to start learning about command line? Well, it's like uh, that Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was, what, 10 years ago? The second best time is now. As a developer, how often do you use command line? I use command line every day. Right. Yeah. And was that from when you um, were a junior dev? Yeah, you pretty much use it because you have to interact with NPM packages and so on. So like Scrimper kind of abstracted all of this so you can focus on actually just writing code. But if you get a job and someone gives you a laptop and they say you need to set it up, then all of a sudden you need to install Node, you need to install NPM, you need to like clone Git repository and things like that. And it would be very hard to do all of that without touching command line. So if you at least don't have fear about command line, it's good. How do you open the CLI interface? So basically you see this little prompt on the screen and that is your CLI, command line interface. I interact with a computer, I can either do it with GUI, which is graphical interface, which is like your Chrome, your Windows and things. And then command line is when you do the same thing, you can open files, close files, and you know do various computer activities through typing commands. So the way you get to this is basically on your computer, whatever you have. If you're on Mac, it's called terminal, hit in option space, and it will open like a little command prompt and you can type terminal. So basically search for terminal app. So it should open something like that. Mm -hmm. If you're on Windows, uh, then you have PowerShell or you have CMD. Terminal is not the only application. There are lots of others. There is item two, there is Kitty Shell, and there are, oh, there are a lot of different terminal applications to use with CLI. I think we should demonstrate, Michael, how to find, how to get to a file. Okay, so now let's go. Ooh, okay, so then. Which uh, we already have my blog. Why not? I thought I deleted that. Oh well, you have it. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> okay. Quickly, let's have a look. So, as you can see, there are some ready files. Here is uh, this is like my blog source code. Mm. So we yeah. can just, for Jean example, Paul says you may want to mention tabbing when typing to change directions. Uh, change directory. Ooh, yeah. Why not? So it's called autocomplete. So you can, for example, go. Very handy. Yeah, so you can list all the stuff in the root, and then you can say ls, uh, sorry, in, in the home folder, and then you say, boop. Uh, if I can't be bothered to type the whole alamind.com, which I don't think I did, uh, I just click tab, and it auto fills, finishes the whole name. Yeah, very uh, handy. The interesting thing is if it's, for example, as you can see, this folder, for example, has desktop documents, downloads, a lot of things beginning with D. Mm -hmm. So if I type tab, it filters suggestions for me and tells, okay, which one do you want? So then I go, oh, tab again, and it filters further. And when I say W, that's only downloads and it auto fills it. Let's create a folder. So to create a folder, you type MKD, which is make directory. Mm -hmm. So make directory. And let's say uh, my directory YouTube session. Okay, cool. We've created, yeah, so there'll be, I can tell, uh, there we go, uh, users, Dan, mm -hmm. and Alan Miner, I think. There we go. So we have created That's this the folder. That's we just made. Created this folder. Yeah. 
So MOOC DAO is the same as if you just go here in the Finder and right click and create new folder, basically. Yeah. OK, so now we have created that. And then we can now go to that folder, YouTube session. Mm -hmm. OK, now, if, whoops, if we type. LS, we can see that it's empty. I'll probably just expand this a little bit. So we haven't added anything in to the folder yet. Yeah. So we haven't added right. anything to that folder yet. So now what I want to do is, again, we know how to create a folder. Now let's create a file. Hmm. Uh, so, so surprisingly, to create a file, it's not make file. Right. That would be too easy. Uh, yeah, that would be, that would be really easy. Uh, you touch a file. So you say touch, and you can see that it's appeared over here uh, at the bottom. So I've created script.sh.sh .sh is extension for shell. So it's like if you want to write basically these commands inside of file, you create them in .shell file. Mm -hmm. so, it's so that's the file type you need for script. Command line script. Yeah, yeah. For command line script. That's right. Makes sense. So OK. And then obviously we can basically say, uh, let's create uh, a subfolder as well. Why not? OK. And now when we list, we have a script and we have a subfolder. Now if we lsl uh, directories would be prefixed with a D and a file is prefixed just with a dash. So there's basically only two types. It's either a directory or a file. Only the first symbol is a file or a directory, but the rest of these are uh, permissions. How to name a folder or file with spaces? Don't do that. It will bring you a lot of pain. Every space is a character. So space is an invisible character. It's still uncoded. It's like a special character that you have to be escaping. You're kind of like saying, because spaces in programming are treated as meaningful tokens. In Python, for example, it's it tells you when one command ends and when another begins. In Unix commands, for example, a new line or a space indicates that command ended and new argument, for example, begins and stuff like that. So it's very easy to throw it off. So the easiest thing is like give it dashes, underscores, or just type it as one word, Pascal case, camel case, whatever. But just avoid spaces because you have to escape them. And that brings weird uh, slashes and escape um, symbols into your file names. And it's, it's just a world of pain. It's not worth doing it. What's the major difference between Linux and Windows CLI? Linux and Windows differ in terms of how they approach permissions, file organization and stuff, and also the commands. So some commands would be different. But basically, you know, if you follow this tutorial and all of a sudden you get an error saying command not found, then it's probably something else on Linux. But most of these should be similar. But at least you'll have an idea of what you're trying to do. Yeah, but if you install web yeah. system for Linux, it will be exactly the same. Would you recommend learning Vim when working with the command line? Uh, you can, but it's not strictly necessary. I suppose what you really do need to know is how to quit Vim. Uh, but for editing any config files or any files as we go, you will be using VS Code. Like I use VS Code, I kind of prefer to use it. I did learn a little bit of Vim just to, you know, find my way around it and be able to edit the file. But yeah, I still prefer VS Code. That's it for our whistle stop tour of command line. If you'd like to learn more, check out the full interview, which I'll link to in a card above. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more Ask an Expert live streams and top tip vids like these. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.